you don't want to use Creality Cloud for your Creality K1 or K1 Max, I've got a solution for you, Creality Print. Yes, it is a slicer software and I'm showing you how I used it. Hey, hello, this is Zagri and welcome to this video. Yeah, last week or previous days, I was printing a lot with the Creality K1, just like I did with the QD Tech X Plus 3, printing almost non-stop. Now at this moment, it is of course not printing. But anyways, if you follow the whole process of, you know, unboxing your K1 or K1 Max, uh, setting it up, at that moment, you need to bind the printer with Creality Clouds. I don't know what lies behind it, but that is a reason why you need a piece of software to, yeah, you know, operate, maintain, or, you know, watch your 3D printer going. And with Creality Print, once set up, you can use this piece of software to not only slice your models, but you can also view what is happening with your 3D printer. And especially if you have the AI camera from Creality hooked up to the K1 or K1 Max, you can watch and see what is happening. And I think that that is cool. Also with the QD Tech X Plus 3, very similar thing. Even though it doesn't have a camera, you can see what is happening. You can see the stats, you can see the process, you can see every little detail about this 3D printer. Yeah, back in the early days of the, you know, Ender 3, Ender 3 Pro, you just had the screen where you had the progress bar, you saw the temperature from the, the nozzle, from the heat bed, you did see a little bit. But now you are almost in full control. There are some little things that I am missing or I couldn't find it. Maybe that is the reason, I don't know. But with Creality Print, you slice your model and then you, after the, sli the slicing, instead of putting it on a thumb drive, a USB thumb drive, you can just send it directly over one IP address directly to your 3D printer. Just a little thing that I want to say about Creality Cloud. I haven't used Creality Cloud with the whole aesthetics about uh, downloading the model, send it to the printer, or do I need to send it directly to my printer? I don't know how it does work, but I already saw a lot of things that I don't like about Creality Cloud. Maybe it's a little thing that it's just me, but I mean, I already saw a model from Eastman Deadpool that I found on Creality Cloud that is a model that I uh, downloaded from printables. But I think that this kind of thing that other people uploading models from other designers, I think that that is not correct. There were various issues in the past when Creality Cloud just started and there are still models on this site where people uploaded designs that they didn't make them themselves. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get to Creality print and slice our first model and see how everything works. Before you are going to use Creality Print, you need to make sure that your 3D printer is all set up, ready to be added to Creality Cloud. What I did, I went to Creality Cloud, I registered myself, and then after verifying, after following the whole registration process, I could add to the workbench my Creality K1. This is Creality Print. This slicer, I put it on the dark theme. You can also change it here. I, you can also use the bright theme, but I do like more the uh, dark theme. The first thing that you need to do is adding your 3D printer. Here, you click on add and then the K series. And here you can choose which kind of printer that you uh, can add to this printer. Here you see many other 3D printers as well. This you will need if you want to use an other printer with Creality Print. Making a whole print farm with it, something like that. But for our purpose in this video, we are going to use the Creality K1 series. I already add this one, but if you are clicking on it, the nozzle diameter 0.4, you click on OK and boom, there you have it. Of course, he is not adding a second K1, but later on you can see exactly what is going to happen if you are adding multiple K1s to your print form. For example, let's start with a very simple model and just go over the whole thing. So this Creality Print, I think that this is from Cura from Ultimaker with their things changed in there. Let's add a model and then let's check the other things out as well. So here we have the Bansi right on the 
build plate. There are many things that we can do. We can, uh, if we select it, we, uh, we can always move it. So outer range. We can, of course, scale it. I always use one of those and then it is going to scale uniform. This is uh, for, for the rotation. This is uh, if you want to put it on the right surface. You can also maybe put it upside down, I don't know. A layout, I haven't used this, but this is how everything is going to be placed on the build plate that you can see, for example, if you have multiple parts that everything is in a certain order. Then we have the supports. Supports are going to be needed in the future, you know, just if you're slicing models, where you need to have supports or else uh, print will fail. Here it is almost everything automatically. Only add support to print bed, automatic support, add custom support. So these supports that only need for just a few little spots. If you want to remove everything, then clear all supports. Of course, we are not going to use that. We have here high quality and we have normal. On this side, you find all materials. So hyper PLA, generic PLA, everything else, everywhere where it says generic, you, you use some other brands. And of course, it is very limited. In the end, you can always, you know, get something very close by. You can here add a new profile, copy from, and yeah, then you can make a new profile for your 3D printing. Uh, we click on slice. So slicing always takes a little bit of time. Here you can uh, you can see how the printer is going to do that. Here in the right corner you will see LAN printing, export to local or upload to Creality Cloud. The last one we don't do, export to local. So if you have a USB thumb drive, in this case, there is a USB connector for that. You can slice it directly to here and then bring the uh, thumb drive to your K1. But we are going to use LAN printing, of course. This is 34 minutes. It's a little bit longer, but doesn't matter. Once you have done all of this, then you will find here the K1. But how did I get there? You can get the printer two ways in. One is by scanning your Wi-Fi or your network in order to find the printer, or you can do a manual add. Well, with manual, you are going to give in your IP address and then Creality Print is going to connect with the printer and it's going to communicate and then it will be added there. Well, I'm not going to do that because I already have a Creality K1. So I click here on this one because that is the 3D printer where I'm going to set the G code to. Don't forget to do this, send G code. And then you will see here right in the center that the model is being uploaded. And then we are clicking on details. And now we are going to the printer itself. Welcome, this is the camera view. If you are buying the AI camera from Creality, you can hook it directly up to the printer on the inside and then follow the instructions on the screen and everything works fine. The last model I have added here, I click on it and then I can say start printing or print with calibration. It's also possible. Or of course, if you made a little mistake, you can delete it. Let's uh, start printing. And there you have it, a nice, beautiful, printed in a blue PLA Pennywise from Photosmint. It is looking nice. I'm happy with the print result. I didn't have to use any supports whatsoever. Sometimes it does happen that when you are printing something that you will need to add supports. I can go very deep into the things about this slicer, how to make the adjustments, uh, what settings to use. But that is just like I mentioned earlier, that is something that you need to figure out for yourself. Which kind of settings you can play with, which one you can better leave behind. And uh, you know, you don't want to have so many failed prints in the end, right? If you made it this far in this video, you are amazing. If you didn't know that, now you know. Also a special thanks for these amazing supporters of this YouTube channel. All names are will be mentioned here or just in front of me, it doesn't matter. But 
a great shout out to these people of the Z3DP gang. Yes, you can be also a gang member of the Z3DP movement. I call it the Z3DP printing gang or Z3DP gang. They are amazing. They are supporting this channel. You can also join by checking the Patreon link or become a YouTube channel member. Perks are in the on the bottom. You can also support this channel. If you are not subscribed, subscribe because almost 90% of the viewers are not subscribed. What are you waiting for? Please hit the subscribe button. If you also want to support this channel by liking this video, very well appreciated. Thank you so much. You can also share this video on other social medias. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Peace. Bye-bye.